If I had to start over, I'd throw out half the advice I followed in university. Because most of it sounds productive, but is actually slowing you down. I'm Salim, I'm a doctor living in London, and after eight years at university across three degrees, I've learned how to study in a way that takes less time, sticks longer, and doesn't burn me out. It made it possible for me to do well in my academics and still have time for things I care about in my personal life. So if you're in school, university, or just trying to learn something new, here are five things I wish I knew from day one that would have saved me years of wasted effort. And the third point is about something you're definitely doing right now as you're watching this video. So stick around for at least until then. So back in uni, I used to think that good study technique meant picking one method and sticking to it. So I'd choose something evidence-based like active recall and just use it across every subject. And that worked for some things, but it also didn't work for a lot of other things. Because I'd hit some topics where no matter how many flashcards I did, nothing was sticking or I'd spend time drawing diagrams but then go blank on a clinical question that looked nothing like what I revised. And this was when I realised that before you choose any study method, you need to know your learning intent. And this is by asking yourself, what's the purpose of this task? Are you trying to memorise facts, understand a system, or apply or diagnose something new? Each of these goals needs a completely different approach. So now, if I need to memorise something, I use spaced repetition and active recall, not just rereading, but forcing myself to retrieve it over time. If I'm trying to understand a mechanism, I'll draw it, explain it out loud, or teach it to someone. And if I'm prepping to apply it, like in a real life case or exam, I'll go straight into practice questions. So if you're revising and feel like you're getting nowhere, it might just be that your method doesn't match your intent. So define the purpose first, then pick a method. And now, one of the most underrated learning skills is knowing when to stop struggling and when to get help. Because earlier on, especially during my undergrad, I thought spending hours stuck on a concept meant I was actively engaging with the content, but all it really did was slow me down and drain my energy. But at the same time, completely giving up too quickly isn't the answer either. You need that initial focused effort, because it's in that mental friction where your brain forms the deeper connections that you'll need for those harder exam questions. Especially back in med school, a lot of the exams weren't just about memory. They were about reasoning through scenarios you hadn't seen before. But if you always jump to the answer, you don't train that critical thinking skill. So the balance I take now is that whenever I hit a level of confusion, I'd set a 15 minute timer. During that time, I'd go deeper into something I'm stuck on, whether it was writing, talking or trying out different angles to understand. But if I'm still stuck after those 15 minutes, I move on. I'd ask a friend, search online or get AI help, and then immediately apply the fix to lock it in. That shift from staying stuck indefinitely to failing faster while still giving yourself time to think saves hours in the long run and keeps momentum. I actually remember in one of my undergrad neurology exams, there was a 25 marker I had no clue how to start. But after the initial panic, I just sat down with the question and brought out a rough brainstorm. And eventually, after about 10 minutes, it clicked. And that module ended up being one of my highest grades. And that only happened because I'd learned to wait and think, instead of immediately giving up or searching for the answer. And that habit paid off when it really mattered, like in the exam hall where you can't just Google or ask someone else. So getting stuck is a part of learning, but if you want to grow efficiently, build a system like this that gives you room to think and a way to move forward when you're done. And now, one of the biggest traps I fell into was thinking I was learning just because I was watching videos or reading books. But this passive consumption just feels productive, even though most of the time it isn't. And if I'm being honest, a lot of you watching will finish this video and not apply a single thing I said. And if you don't apply what you're consuming, it's just entertainment for you, not actionable advice. That's why every time I read or watch something I want to learn from, I force myself to make it actionable. I write down three things, what I learned, how I apply it, and when I'll apply it. For example, let's say you watch a video on how to structure your study sessions. You'd note down the method, then decide how it fits your current routine and exactly when you'll test it. And a key part to this is tracking whether you'll actually use it or not. If you didn't, ask why. Was it too complicated? Did you forget? Or was it just not relevant anymore? This turns learning more into a live experiment where you actually try out different things and see what sticks and what works well for you. And because you'll start tracking what you apply, you naturally consume less, making you more selective and intentional with the advice you listen to. If there's one thing you take from this video, it should be this point. Because learning means changing your behaviour after gaining new information. If nothing changes, then you haven't really learned anything. And now is a problem that a lot of people who call themselves perfectionists would have. I noticed how in my earlier years of studying, I wasted a lot of time trying to find the perfect resources, the clearest videos, or the best explanations. But I realised that most of the time, 
it wasn't that I was looking for perfection, it was that I was avoiding starting. I've seen this a lot with people in the comments, delaying things because they haven't found the perfect method or because they feel like they could do more. But this perfection approach is just procrastination with better branding. Because if you're watching your third video on a specific topic, someone else is already applying what they've learned from the first one. So what you need to do is set your hard limit for when it comes to researching a topic or learning something new. Instead of giving yourself unlimited passes to keep going into a topic or trying to improve something more and more, just commit with what you've got so that you can switch from input to output. So that could be getting on with your flashcards, testing yourself or teaching your friends, not just watching another explanation. It's about getting comfortable with knowing that yes, there might be a better method or more knowledge, but if you're already 99% of the way there, that extra 1% isn't worth the time and effort because what you have is already more than enough. And now before the next point, if you're interested in one-to-one -one coaching with me, visit my website linked in the description. I've helped over 40 clients build sustainable systems to improve their productivity, studying and stress management. The goal isn't quick fixes. I'm here to help you build habits and systems so solid that you won't need coaching ever again. So if you want coaching or want to learn more, check out the link in the description. And now if I'm honest, this point is something you'll probably shrug off if you're studying for exams, but it's worth keeping in mind. And it's about how back in school or uni, learning often felt like it was just about memorizing everything to pass exams. But if I had to start over, I'd shift my focus away from pure memorization and towards what I'll actually use in the real world. Instead of cramming facts, that means focusing more on building the skills I need as a doctor, like clinical reasoning, effective communication, and making decisions under pressure. And this isn't just about medicine, it applies to my YouTube channel or even playing piano, where mastering fundamental skills is far more valuable than just rushing through content, because real life rewards how well you can apply your knowledge. So if I were back in med school, I'd think more about what actually makes a good doctor. Things like communicating with patients, handling stress, and staying organized to then have a better balance in life. Even looking back at piano, I wish I'd spent more time mastering fundamentals instead of just jumping from one piece to the next. These meta skills, good habits, judgment, adaptability, are what truly matter, not just how many pages you can memorize. Because nobody cares if you can score 100% on an exam if you aren't approachable, and you won't care about your grades either if all you do with your life is study and nothing more. So rather than obsessing over covering every topic, start learning as if you're already in the role, training your brain for real world challenges by developing those core skills. This mindset shift is going to save you time and make you more prepared for what really counts. So if I had to start learning all over again, these are the five key things I'd focus on to make my study time as effective as possible. But now a growing problem you likely face is that even when you know how to study efficiently, procrastination can quietly steal your progress without you even realizing. I've had moments where I knew exactly what to do, but still got distracted or procrastinated, which made me fall behind. But in this video here, I share how I overcame procrastination and started getting more done than ever before. And it can help you do the same. So click the video to learn more.